Welcome to Season 1, Episode 49 of Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham, and today's episode is I don't think that democracy... I don't think that word is means what you think it means. I keep on hearing you saying democracy, but I don't think that word means what you think it means, at least in the context of American democracy and Western democracy and voting and presidency and the American presidents and finally Donald Trump. We'll go into that uh, with my Camry brain and without any notes, without any links, without any citations, without any uh, historical education, just right out of my gut in a second. Thank you. In America, when it comes to... uh, Oh, welcome back. Uh, This is Chris Abraham. This is Season 1, Episode 49 of Chris Cast. This is a podcast where I just go ahead and talk stuff. Um, Warning, uh, in a world, uh, in a DC, um, inside the Beltway, where a lot of people I engage with have LaFerrari uh, brains, have uh, Veyron brains, have Bugatti brains, have have, uh, Lamborghini brains, I have a base model Camry brain. It's reliable. It's got good six cylinders and, uh, it hasn't, it hasn't let me down yet. I've, I've yet to, uh, break down. However, I'm certainly not doing donuts in the parking lot. So back to democracy. Democracy has been weaponized in America. And it's generally been weaponized against other countries. It's been uh, the shibboleth. It's been the rally cry. It's been the uh, the it's been the red herring used to topple world governments with a plum uh, and without any repercussions or without any need to explain ourselves for the last uh, for the last seventy five years. I was going to say for the last 50 years, but it's not uh, the year uh, 2000 anymore, right? So 75, 80 years, 100 years, uh, democracy has been a rally cry uh, that has enabled us and empowered us to uh, bomb brown people in foreign countries and to bomb poor white people in foreign countries and to do whatever we want, um, even if it allows us to decide that the that the democratically elected person in office isn't a isn't democrat enough and so we can replace him with one of our uh puppet presidents this has transpired again and again and again around the world and in the this last uh election cycle uh this um this strategy this strategy this stratagem, this stratagem has been aimed on us. Um, if you've actually lived in America, and not just New York City, where uh, my friend who works for the New York Times thinks that uh, that America has, uh, America is made up um, uh, culturally and geographically like, like, um, uh, Sesame Street, if you if you live outside of America, or if you've ever gone to a public high school, and I'll explain why I need to define what a public high school is versus a private school or a boarding school or a prep school is. If you've ever gone to a public school, you know that democracy never results in uh, the national merit scholar 
uh, winning anything. Um, democracy never results in the most humane, beautiful child of God uh, winning uh, king and queen at the prom. Uh, you know for a fact that uh, with direct democracy or even representative democracy, uh, the 80% uh, gets their way over the over the LaFerrari, Lamborghini, uh, S-Class, um, SRS8, Audi, uh, high horsepower individuals. The elite never gets their way in democracy, but without democracy, the elite never get their way. Ooh, wow, this Camry came up with something interesting. Oh, this, this reminds me. Ah, let me come back after the... That was such a good one. I'm going to drop the mic and come back right after a break. Welcome back. This is Chris Abraham, Chris Cast, episode 49, season one of Chris Cast. Uh, yeah, um, I don't even remember what I said. I said, uh, without democracy, uh, with democracy, the elite never get their way. But without democracy, uh, the elite, uh, without democracy, the elite never get their way. With democracy, the elite never get their way. Without them. De- but without democracy, the elite never get their way. Anyway, it was much smarter, like I said, a uh, Camry engine. <clears throat> Sorry, Toyota. You're reliable, but you, uh, even with your performance models, you are not, surely not even a Mustang. Um, my buddy in the intelligence services in the United States, uh, the Fort Meade variety, um, did a lot of training in the 90s. He did all kinds of operations training. It was really cool to be his best friend uh, or a best friend when he was doing things like uh, getting all of the sort of FBI training. He was taught how to tail someone, taught how to shake a tail, taught how to identify situations, um, taught all about um, situational awareness and operations and interrogations and and all these other things um uh so awesome to and and i only had a small puka and that's the hawaiian word for whole a small portal into his experience because i was not i was not um need to know but i got a little bit of a taste of what he was up to and it was very exciting and um i've always been interested in conspiracy theories and so Back in the early 2000s, I was running a site called memes.org, and it uh, ended up becoming a uh, uh, a slash dot type site where people would submit news, and it ended up being all awesome conspiracy theory. And key, you know, it was important for my buddy to remind to remind me. That uh, that there's no that that in order for um, f- in order for civility in the streets, in order for um, calm to remain in in any uh, in in any high density city, <clears throat> it needs to be it you know the the uh, community needs to be uh, a little bit like it uh, it needs to be the the elephant that sees himself tethered to a small sapling and that elephant had been uh tethered to that small sapling since that elephant had been small and uh lo and behold as that elephant grows and becomes a gigantic pachyderm 
that elephant uh, no longer uh, tests that tether the way it did when it was a child uh, and unable to extricate itself from that tether. And then into old age, that uh, elephant is stuck to and planted uh, by the by the sapling, never to uh, realize that with just a a swipe of its uh, of its um of its pachyderm pachydermy trunk, it could have uh, re- extricated itself and 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 gone free. Uh, Americans are like that, and my buddy keeps on reminding me that that uh, the CIA is a super small organization, uh, the DIA is a super small organization, the NSA is a super small organization, the police forces, even New York City cops. Um, hey Google, how many uh, police officers? How many police are there in New York City? Thirty-six thousand officers. On the website www.nyc.gov, they say, The New York City Police Department is the largest and one of the oldest municipal police departments in the United States, with approximately 36,000 officers and 19,000 civilian employees. Hey Google, divide 9 million uh, by 36,000. The answer is 250. So that is not... It's not possible for one cop to uh, to keep to tend to 250 civilians, even in New York City. Um, in general, hey Google, what's the population of uh, Washington D.C.? In 2018, the population of Washington D.C. was 684,498. Hey Google, can you repeat that? Sure. In 2018, the population of Washington, D.C. was 684,498. Hey, Google, how many police officers are there in Washington, D.C.? 3,800 officers. According hey, to Wikipedia. Hey, Google, hey, Google, divide uh, uh, 684,000 by... I'm sorry. Seems like I didn't understand you. Your feedback will definitely help me improve. Well, uh, suffice it to say, as I go grab my coffee as it's boiling, uh, suffice it to say that um, that the proportion of law enforcement to the number of people representing that sapling and that elephant are nothing to be trifled with. So, as my buddy says, in terms of National Guard... And in terms of uh, uh, police force and and spooks and everybody else, <clears throat> if the population doesn't want to be controlled, the population doesn't have to be controlled. Um, but Chris, if uh, New York City goes completely mental, they can call in the National Guard, and they can call in police force from the surrounding tri-state area. Isn't that true? Yes. General person asking questions. That is indeed true, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, is that democracy uh, very rarely um, turns out the way you want it to. uh, If you want it to uh, turn out to be an enlightened, loving, caring, um, calm, peaceful, uh, insightful child of God, as opposed to a lawless, selfish monster. Um, and we'll talk more about that after the break. So actual, this actual desire that people have to have a, an actual representative democracy, um, you know, might turn out well. It depends on how, how happy people will always be to have the dominant cities in a country uh, choose their 
president. Like when, um, when New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, Tacoma, um, Boston, when, when these top population states, uh, and their cities decide that they want to vote in, uh, Hillary Clinton, and if America were a direct, direct democracy, firstly, one must consider whether or not uh, there is a finger um, placed squarely on the scale and whether or not our democracy has been weaponized, whether or not uh, we our democracy, and I don't know either way, whether or not our democracy is is as gamed as the de- as the democracy that we impose. Uh, on other democracies and whether our, uh, whether we are, whether we, um, are using, um, pretty words to make people do what they want, making them feel like they have, um, that they have agency over their lives and that their, uh, opinions matter. Um, the only way state and local government, uh, ever works in a positive forward way is that the only people who show up uh, for state and local elections are people who uh, have in their life a desire to um, to be passionate and to feel uh, an account for what they want the world to look like in their in their image and and if you just force people to go out and vote. You'll always, 100% every time, have your boat named uh, Bodie McBoatface. Uh, we live in a world where direct votes and voting in general without, uh, without making sure that while Marge is driving, um, Maggie, is Maggie the little baby that never grows up? Uh, while Marge is driving the car, Maggie is convinced that she has uh, a little steering wheel in front of her. And she steers that wheel and steers that wheel and steers that wheel. And the car never crashes because mommy is actually driving the car. Like democracy is the most beautiful manifestation of that kind of false impression of power and control. If you call something, you can call anything democracy you want. Um, As we see through 2020 rearward vision and not of just Trump. Uh, Trump is actually the best case scenario. Uh, Trump at the end of the day is a uh, multi-generational New Yorker who uh, has never been drummed out of the core. In fact, he's been embraced innumerable times. Um, None of his brands have, have gone, have ever been extinguished. He has had, and you know, all you people who make fun of him for having all of those, um, of going, all those bankruptcies, you are, you're showing your cards. All y'all know how bankruptcy works. Don't pretend like bankruptcy isn't a, a, uh, well-used an extremely profitable way of, of destroying uh, shareholder values so that you can, uh, afford things. Remember? Uh, the Sirius satellite, you know, it, um, it costs so much money to put satellite radio into the, into the atmosphere, um, to, to create Sirius XM that the entire venture very quickly went bankrupt and then sold its assets, uh, for pennies in the dollar. That was a strategic move, right? They, they had, they had overwhelming debt funding the operation, um, so they needed to scrub that debt like anybody else who uh, goes into bankruptcy. They, um, they get over their head. They spend too many people's, uh, other people's money. And then they get out of it through bankruptcy so that they can have uh, some breathing room and then, you know, collect more debt or um, um, create more profitable situations, uh, actually make money on their investment, right? So if you scrub the debt from random and sundry investors, they go away crying, legally speaking. Uh, you can move forward with a more 
fruitful, healthy uh, company. It's sort of like having a bunch of tapeworms removed from your from your belly. Having the tapeworms removed from your belly so every food that you eat, every piece of food that you eat, um, and here's a shout out to all the people who love the Three Stooges, you know, um, why are you eating that boot, uh, uh, Curly? Because I got a tapeworm, and I, and I don't want to go ahead and feed that tapeworm. Anyway, that was not Curly's voice. Woo, 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 woo. That was more like, uh, uh, a Marx Brothers voice, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, you know, shoe leather is good enough for him. Um, come back after the break. I need to gather my thoughts. <laughs> Welcome to season one, episode 49 of Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham, and I am. It's actually only 6.03 a.m., so I've been chatting with you since uh, uh, in the 0500s, so th this might explain why my thoughts aren't coherent. Don't forget, Toyota Camry, vroom, vroom. Not a Hellcat. No Hellcat in this head. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Um, democracy is sort of like the kind of democracy that you have in, in, in high school or public school or whatnot, right? Um, you can do whatever you want, but it's actually the, the, the principal and his minions who actually have the, the, the true control. The, um, the democracy that you experience in school has, it has extreme limits. Um, you, you are on in many ways rails. Uh, the freedom of your press is relative. The freedom of your democracy is relative. Um, uh, the people you can, <clears throat> the people you can uh, vote for, is obviously limited. And um, while the uh, there is no guarantee at all that the uh, that the ballots are not. Uh, that the ballots and the ballot counting is not uh, gently or even overtly steered by by the administration. And um, I'm not saying that there's powers that be. I'm just saying that the greater the the value the greater value of the governance, in other words, the high school and the ability of the high school to operate in a relatively efficient um, mission with with its various and sundry goals. And its um, and its requirements for its 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 reason for being must limit the amount of uh, fuckery that goes on um, that can and would destabilize the forward momentum, the growth, expansion, success, and health of of the greater corpus. So. Um, they're definitely America democracies use willy nilly. And I don't think that word means what you think it means. I think democracy in many ways is just a brutish, fashionable enabler to say that all the terrible things that are happening are a your fault. You're kind of in cahoots. Uh, if we are a droning, terrible warrior nation that that uh, is committed to adventurism droning, killing, destabilizing of foreign countries and, and foreign governments and installing um, uh, puppets, puppet governments in the name of democracy, then if we feel like we are, we are voters and our voices result in this kind of thing, it must, in fact, be in our best interest. And in many ways, you know, if Marge crashes the car and Maggie is under the illusion that she's steering, Maggie is going to feel terrible that she crashed the car or ran over a brown person or started a war or um, uh, killed Bambi. So it's also used in terms of, you know, democracy is, is um, weaponized in terms of being considered enlightened, considered fair, considered egalitarian, considered just. And none of those things 
are by any definition things that actually represent America. America is a very irresponsible single uh, global leader and superpower. I mean, in no ways um, are we, you know, even the French are being terribly French with their um, egalité and um, uh, liberté and all that other stuff. Um, all those words, I hate to say it, are just um, words that make us as a people feel better about ourselves. It's like the respect that Don Corleone receives makes him feel like he is an ascended master, a in many ways a um, uh, a a power. A, a power of good, the kind of righteous, righteous decision maker, the righteous leader who must, through pain of his own heart and because everybody around him is a moron and too pathetic and weak to to do what is what needs to be done, Don Carleone can surround himself with enough sophistication and enough wealth and enough success and enough uh, sycophants, um, and a real belief that he is a just child of God, a good Catholic, who is just only, who is trying to create order out of chaos, um, <clears throat> instead of realizing that all he is, is a, is a murderer, and a criminal, and a monster, and a psychopath, and a terror, who would be better off dead. Um, and, you know, uh, democracy is weaponized that way. I don't think that word is what you think it is. And I think I'm out of gas. I think I'm out of juice. I think uh, in the next segment, I'll just tell you how to listen, how to get a hold of me, how to follow me, and all that other fun stuff. And I will flatter you for being here. Flatter, 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 flutter, flutter, flutter. <laughs> Welcome back. Season 1, Episode 49 of Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham, and I live in sexy South Arlington, Virginia, a beautiful enclave called Arlington Heights. I am looking over an amazing view I have from the 8th floor of my market-rate shitty apartment building, but I have an amazing vista. I literally have a vista overlooking a uh, golf course called Army Navy Golf Course, or it's called Army Navy Country Club. And then past that, I barely see the cars going by um, on 395 North. Uh, they are behind a sound shield, so the only time I ever hear anything is when someone with their Hayabusa motorcycle guns it like a bad boy. And past that, I see uh, Roslyn. No, I see. I don't see Roslyn. I see Crystal City. I see Pentagon City. I see Alexandria, and I even see all the way out to this place called. Um, I don't know what is it called. Uh, Washington. I don't know. It's the place with the MGM Gaylord Hotel. Hey Google. What city is the MGM Gaylord Hotel in? Gaylord National Resort and Convention Center. Here you go. A lot of places have changed their hours and services to Hey Google, See? where is the Gaylord National Resort and Convention Center? Here's a map of Gaylord National Resort and Convention Center, Fort Washington, Maryland, 20745. I can see all the way to... Is it? It's not Washington Harbor. It's Washington something they call it. Anyway, I can see the um, the Ferris wheel or whatever they call it, uh, and I can see the bright, uh, glitzy, glincy um, hotel. I mean, it's bright. You know, on a, on a clear day, I can see forever. Um, oh, one last note: if 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 America were a true democracy. 
there wouldn't be dynasties, right? Dynasties. There wouldn't be the Bush dynasty. There wouldn't be the potential Clinton dynasty. Um, if it were a true democracy, uh, Yale and Harvard wouldn't be the only universities representative. If it were a true democracy, then uh, probably there wouldn't be so many Freemasons. Um, there wouldn't be so many skull and bones. There certainly wouldn't be any directors of the CIA. Um, don't forget that in many ways, uh, democracy with false choices isn't democracy, right? So if you have your, um, if you have the people you get to choose from, like if your mom says to you, you have so many choices tonight, you can have chicken with broccoli, you can have fish with asparagus, or you can have, um, uh, you can have, um, uh, tofu, and and spinach uh that's not that's a false a false democracy that's a false choice that's that those that's that's your mom trying to make you eat right by by giving you a feeling of of agency where you don't have one wow i guess i haven't stopped talking right so maybe the next segment will be me shutting down and talking about uh where to contact me it's now beep Good morning. It is Tuesday, 1 December, 0613 in the morning. Hey, this is a bonus section. Uh, because I was listening to the episode, and even though this might not get pushed out, you might miss it. I want to realize that in the 48, 50, 38, 35 minutes of this podcast, I never go down the uh, Electoral College uh, direct democracy versus representational democracy uh, thing. So <clears throat> I'm the guy who like tells you, yeah, well, America is not a direct democracy. Um, even though you say that everything I'm about to say is racist and all about supporting uh, slave owners from the South, yada, 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 which is a great way to end a conversation. It's, uh, it's the new uh, mentioning Hitler or Nazis to stop a conversation. But I'm going to push forward. America is a loose collection of states. Each state has its own, it's sort of like the, the NFL, right? Each state is a franchise. Each franchise has its own uh, home rules. Each franchise makes its own financial decisions. <clears throat> there is an oversight in terms of branding. Uh, you can't get that far off brand with the NFL. Um, the NFL, uh, as a general corpus, can... Uh, do things to make a particular franchise life franchise's life more uh, unhappy, and it can also uh, expel one franchise and it can initiate or accept another. So, in many ways, <clears throat> the players don't get to make decisions for each franchise. The franchise owner. And the board and the ownership uh, get to make that decision for the for the benefit of the NFL and the benefit of the franchise. Uh, think of uh, the United States more akin to the <clears throat> to the European Union. Um, there's there's each each country has its own um, very unique culture. Uh, up until recently, its very own currency. Uh, even now, its very own understanding of itself, its very own national identity. And realize that each country in the European Union is not uh, out of scope and out of ratio with a state in our giant North America <clears throat> to the south of uh, Canada and to the north of Mexico. Um, and then you'll, you'll be spot on. Uh, remember... We don't have, this is not a, federa a federated country. This is not a federation. This is not a top-down 
uh, call and reply. Um, you know, freaking union. This is not a. This is not a union. This is not a federation. This is not uh, one country. <clears throat> this country represents as one country, but it is fifty uh, very unique states with. They're very, very much their own culture. Um, the university system, uh, the welfare system, the uh, taxation system, what it taxes, what it doesn't, what its priorities are, um, the textbooks it uses, the, um, the school holidays, and uh, are, are generally similar. <clears throat> but each and every school district uh, is completely different than another. This happens in terms of um, not just the states either. This is to do with, with cities and counties and villages and so forth. This is very much a fractured, uh, extremely fractured uh, system of, of, of tribes. And it is governed very locally, very much uh, state by state, and then ultimately federally. But um, I dare say that Catholic schools have more uh, consistency across their education programs than, than, do, um, than do public schools. And <clears throat> school, schools, uh, private schools that have various and sundry visions probably have um, have uh, have more consistency over the entire country than they do each state or local school district has um, has a lot to do with with budget with funding with priorities with uh, with um, any number of things so <clears throat> here I am mr. cisgender white slave owner um, that's a joke I'm not saying that. Grew up in Hawaii. I actually really think I'm a five foot four Japanese boy, but um, you know the the uh, it's not even the it's not it's it's much more than the representational democracy that you think it is. Like the electoral college is reduced into. I mean, you're going to see it this time. It's going to become very evident. It's going to become extremely evident that um, that there are literally electors, and that the uh, once you get into the weeds, you realize that that in many ways we as as voters uh, in many cases are uh, within reason just a little Maggie with her her little toy uh, vroom vroom car wheel and horn uh, when when in fact the electors. Uh, the meritocracy, uh, the the technocrats, the bureaucrats, the state and local government, and at the end of the day, uh, the shills for the Republicans and the shills for the Democrats are the people who make the final choices. Um, and then when push comes to shove, it's the judges. So uh, I think that Back to uh, school or back to family life, your parents uh, give you false choices. Uh, you get to choose between uh, the broccoli, the asparagus, the the um, uh, the greens, uh, the carrots, uh, the Brussels sprouts, or the kale. And then at the end of the day, you get to make your own democratic decision. But at the end of the day, all of the decisions were fed to you, and you had a very limited selection. And people like uh, <clears throat> like uh, Bernie Sanders and my beloved goddess Tulsi Gabbard are, are just done to. They're done early and often in terms of primaries to appease people and redirect them. They're bait and switches to draw the uh, attraction of shiny things. To bring them back on board uh, when they are um, when they are uh, uh, overboard. Um, anyway, that's my response to and you know 
And at the end of the day, the reason why the Electoral College was developed is not to empower slave owners, but it was to appease the uh, very, 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 very broad definition of states that are across this country, many of which, as you've told me, are uninhabited, except for sheep and wheat. And many are these cosmopolitan dynasties of robber barons like Chicago, New York, San Francisco, L.A., Houston, Dallas, uh, Atlanta, Boston, <clears throat> etc. So in order to make everybody play nice, you need to, uh, especially when all these poor, decrepit, racist slaveholder countries have, um, outside of California, have extreme direct primary access to resources that the rest of the country needs to survive. You know, be it, uh, be it gas, oil, um, wheat, corn, rice, you know, the exports and the imports, the, I mean, sorry, the exports and the domestically consumed you have um, wind farms, you have, um, you have dams, you have electrical plants, you have uh, army bases, you have factories. I mean, you have to make each and every state, no matter how populous, and no matter how, I mean, frankly, no matter how, they, how much they disagree with your buffaloing, you have to give them as much or sometimes even greater seat at the table in, um, and, and, and realize that you have one vote, but your one vote goes towards uh, making the election as a state, right? So you don't have fractional vote. You just have one vote that goes towards the electors uh, stake at the electoral college. And even that probably isn't as free as you would think. Um, and, you know, honestly, if you are a Democrat living in New York City, then you should just be uh, as pleased as punch. Because uh, in many ways, you know, your, your southern jurisdiction uh, uh, courts have, in generally, your splendorificeness and magnificence and almost 10 million uh, souls uh, make you quite a big uh, a big, you in, in California, you, you've got quite a lot of sway, even if, even if all of all participants at the table, um, state by state in the electoral college, it still is not representational with regards to, um, to monies. It's not representational, uh, with regard, it's, it's, sorry, it's, it's not egalitarian. Well, it's not state by state egalitarian when it comes to the Congress, right? That has to do with population, um, and it has to do with uh, with the Senate. And the Senate brings uh, power back in in moderation and protects protects those forty five states, those forty eight states against the bulldozing from the left and from the right from the west coast and from the right uh from the east coast from bulldozing the middle of america uh what you call the flyover states every single time and if you think that they're that they're at our mercy uh they're most certainly not i mean uh they have a lot of power as you all have seen over the last four years and during the Bush administration and during the, actually during the Obama administration, you've seen that these states that you call flyover states and full of deplorables uh, have spanked you again and again and again and again. So show a little respect, stop belly aching, and realize that you need to become what you actually say you are, which is a big tent, big umbrella, egalitarian, love your neighbor state. I mean, this, nobody is going to buy after four years of resist, your sudden uh, metanoia as remotely authentic. Hey, Google, what does the word metanoia mean? Here's the definition of metanoia. Change in one's way of life resulting from penitence or spiritual conversion. Alexa, 
What does the word metanoia mean? Metanoia is usually defined as a profound, usually spiritual, transformation, conversion. So I learned that it was metanoia is a turning around. And that turning around of uh, let's all, now that this is over and Biden and um, and uh, Kamala are, are elected, let's all just get along. Let's come back together. Let us unite as a country. Let's put those things behind us. Let us, uh, let us reconnect. Let us, let's right and left become one. Um, and you know what? That is the most inauthentic, hypocritical, mean spirited. Here's something I found on the web. According to powerofpositivity.com, Continuously talking bad about others or gossiping is a behavior typical of hypocritical people. <laughs> Alexa, I'm a hypocrite. Alexa, I'm a hypocrite. Ooh. You know what they say. Um, hey, Google, what is the saying if you... Can't say something nice about someone. Don't say anything at all. It's better to be quiet than to be mean. Alexa, what is the quote? It's better to be quiet than to be mean. Here's something I found on the web. According to answerbag.com, the phrase has come to mean essentially they say you are allowed to do something, but if you want to, you may not, making the provision usless. Alexa, what is the saying, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all? Here's something I found on the web. According to BaltimoreSun.com, many of us are familiar with the expression, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all, or some variant of it. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so... Hmm, I'm not sure. So, at the end of the day, you know, there are states. The states have agency. The states have a lot more agency than a proper country probably should have. Um, uh, provinces, how much autonomy do provinces have in, in, um, in Ca Canada? How much, how much agency do the, um, Hey, Google, what are states in Mexico called? On the website embermex.sre.gov.mx, they say, Political Division of Mexico consists of 32 states, Aguascalientes, Baja California, Baja California Sur, Campeche, Coahuila, Colima, Chiapas, Chihuahua, Durango, Mexico City, Guanajuato, Guerrero, Hidalgo, Jalisco, Mexico, Michoacán, Morelos, Nayarit, Nuevo León, Oaxaca, Puebla, Querétaro, Quintana Roo, San Luis. Wow, that's more information than I ever wanted to know. But I do not know anything about how the uh, Mexican states, the kind of autonomy or agency that they have. But um, like, uh, you know, like the franchises of a McDonald's, or the franchises of an NFL, or the franchises of a baseball team. There are a lot, a lot of decisions that can be made autonomously on in in each particular uh, in each particular store, if you will, or each particular franchise. However, uh, they need to get the branding right. They need to be, if you will, mostly on 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 message. And besides that. Uh, each particular member of each particular franchise has a certain amount of agency, a certain amount of voting rights, and it takes a lot. It takes a lot to be able to conspire enough to either kick off, kick out a franchise or a state, and it takes a hell of a lot more to bring a new state or a new franchise uh, onto, onto the train. 
So, uh, yeah, uh, if, if America were dem direct democracy, uh, this totally wouldn't be fair. Wah, 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 wah. The good news is, is that you're protected too, right? This bulwark known as the Electoral College uh, will also protect you if something terrible happens and there is a kind of extremism that you're no longer comfortable with. Let's say that the left became to the left of AOC. Let's say that the left, I mean, AOC is talking about putting together lists of people, right? That's pretty draconian, if you ask me. That's pretty uh, Stasi, if you ask me. So let's say uh, the left goes further left than we could ever imagine, to the point where even uh, conservative, middle of the road, and even liberal Democrats feel like uh, there is no good happening in America, and that uh, um, the social justice is actually a front for censorship and oppression and thought control and terrible 1984 things that nobody likes, uh, and not even packaged in a beautiful, utopian, brave new world uh, uh, um, orgy fest. Um, it, th you'll be protected then, too. I mean, it, this bulwark, this slowness of decision, this, this ponderousness of the American uh, uh, super, uh, super ship, um, uh, super liner is uh, is the kind of thing that protects everybody from from the from the the kind of thing that can happen uh, even in a parliamentary system uh, where a minority party uh, can build allegiances and alliances and create a super party uh, that results in the um, the in the in the Nazi party that then had its eyes on all of Europe. Um, Remember, that's your beautiful, preferred, egalitarian uh, parliamentary system at work. That's their version of a democracy. So even though you're not pleased, and I know that you're um, uh, apoplectic about it, uh, just uh, understand that definition of democracy through my Camry head, rev, 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 with the support of my uh, girlfriends, Google and, uh, and, and, and Amazon. All right. Thank you very much. It is now the crack of 0800 and I got to go get some work done. Bye-bye. Welcome back. This is Chris Abraham, season one, episode 49. Chris Cast. This is really the last segment. My name is Chris Abraham. Like I said, I live in sexy South Arlington. I, you can reach me at Chris Abraham on Twitter, at Chris Abraham on Instagram. You can reach me on my website. You can even on my website find all of my love poetry and bad poetry from when I was in my 20s. That's at ChrisAbraham.com. You can reach me at Chris at Abraham.su. I got the TLDSU because um, the only top-level domain that is both godless and everybody's forgotten about is the Soviet Union top-level domain. I like it for two reasons. Firstly, Abraham is a prophet of three religions, so getting, you know, Abraham.com, there's actually three reasons. Abraham.com is pretty impossible. I've always envied people who have first name at last name dot com as their email address. So now I can have Chris at Abraham.su. But thirdly, there's a lot of people who over the last four to six to eight years are completely convinced that I'm a Russian bot or some sort of Russian propagandist or in some way working for Vladimir Putin or some part of the uh, the um, uh, web brigades from um St. Petersburg. The beautiful thing is I visited St. Petersburg in the, in 1996. It was awesome. So, you know, all the, I, I've, I've, uh, the beautiful conspiracies of seeing me as someone who could have done this are sundry. And I love exacerbating that by doing anything I can, like picking up kettlebells, which are a Russian thing, uh, 
We're reserving the domain name Girovic.su, and Girovic is the Russian word for um, kettlebell uh, athlete. And um, so there you go, Chris at Abraham.su. So you can also go to Abraham.su as an alias to ChrisAbraham.com. Um, I'm YouTube.com slash Chris Abraham. I'm LinkedIn.com slash in slash Chris Abraham. I'm, uh, you can call me at plus one, two, oh, two, three, five, two, five, zero, five, one. You can text me at plus one, two, oh, two, three, five, two, five, zero, five, one. And you can probably connect with me on WhatsApp that way. Oh, lordy, lordy. I highly recommend anybody in the sexy North uh, South Arlington neighborhood of Arlington Heights slash Penrose slash um, uh, this area. I recommend that you all um, patronize, patronize, um, spend money at uh, Idido's uh, social house and coffee shop. Say hello to Sophonia for me and Akeem and the beautiful um, ladies who work there and um, tell him assalamu alaikum, tell Akeem assalamu alaikum. And um, what else? Oh, uh, oh yeah. My home base for this podcast is anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham. If you want to support me, you can do it uh, at anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham slash support. You can, I would love it if you subscribed. I'm on Spotify and iHeartRadio and all those other places. Uh, if I'm, if, if the place that you're listening does not have current episodes, or if you found anything that's broken, please let me know. Um, please subscribe, please thumbs up, please give me stars, please review and please comment. Um, I guess the main place to do that is, uh, is if you are on, um, Apple podcasts, because that supposedly helps people find me and mahalo. And I'll talk to you soon until next time. Auf Wiedersehen. I used to think that all schools were the same. I thought that, you know, there'd be a certain level of uh, hegemony and consistency across the education platforms in America. And that my uh, K through uh, seven, my K through six education in Hawaii public school or my uh, seven through 12 education in a Hawaii all boys Catholic school would be similar to other schooling. And I think I was led to believe that there was a common type of schooling based on, you know, 1970s, 80s, and 90s representation of schools. Even wealthy schools like, you know, uh, 90210 had, you know, the same sort of pecking order thing. And there were jocks and there were nerds. And from movies, there's jocks, there's nerds, there's band geeks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, couldn't be further from the truth. After getting to know lots and lots of people, since I went to a very fancy university, after getting to know lots and lots of people who attended prep schools, boarding schools, Choate, Exeter, um, Andover, all that other kind of stuff, if you meet someone who went to a, a fifty to $80,000 a year boarding school and also day school and pre-K and all that other kind of stuff, like a generic New Yorker or San Francisco person or... Connecticuter or Bostonian or whatever, there's a pretty good chance that their entire school was all nerds. And in fact, if you went to, if you know people who went to PSs, public schools in New York and went to magnet schools, they were sequestered in entire schools of only nerds. You know, dudes who didn't get laid until they were in college or after, you know, uh, uh, sort of a a future perfect Star Trek world where men and women respect each other. Um, I know that there are definitely uh, lots of date raping and stuff going on in, in 
some very elite schools based on some books that my friend Abby wrote uh, with regards to, you know, the um, uh, lacrosse team boys and that kind of stuff. But in general, I think that you can't extrapolate that George W. Bush's experience as a boarding school kid who went directly into Yale is going to have any commonality with what I was talking about with regards to um, uh, the fake democracy that happens in the student body president election or the uh, king and queen of the prom election. Um, if you watch 21 Jump Street Revisited, the new version movie, you know, even in modern words, like, for example, when Trump was talking about uh, um, his, his, you know, chat with Billy Bush in the tour bus, talking about uh, grabbing women by their pussies. <clears throat> Everybody was sort of excusing him because it was locker room uh, braggadocio. And yet I think that either my fancy friends on Facebook were either virtue signaling saying, heaven no, I've never heard ever, ever, ever heard that kind of braggadocio happening in any uh, sort of, uh, of um, locker room in my entire life. Good Lord, no. Or they literally had an experience where they were never exposed to that kind of behavior. I'm told that you know, I know that my Jewish friends who went to, to summer camp would lie and talk about things that they did to girls, even though they were complete, self-admittedly, you know, completely had no game. Um, and, you know, the, the old chestnut, the, the trope is that, you know, boys talk story and lie about their conquests in the most graphic, awful ways, whether or not they've uh, engaged in them. So... For me, going to an all-boys Catholic school, you know, where there's always a, a strong homoerotic vibe coming out of an all-boys Catholic school for both the all-boys and for both that and the Catholic, uh, there is, was always saber rattling, and by saber I mean penis, that we were all these Lotharios and these uh, big studs. And, and I could imagine a million times uh, I made sure that I got got, you know, had my first sexual experience on my birthday at the age of 16 so I could get it out of the way. Totally unromantic. I needed to get it out of the way. My buddies at, uh, at St. Louis were giving me too much uh, harassment for being a virgin. So, I mean, all the time people would talk story. I mean, it's a real develop, an essential developmental part of what I believe everybody does, but I guess everybody doesn't. So when I heard when I heard uh, Donald Trump, uh, when people were excusing him as uh, just talking locker room uh, bravado, I totally believe that that's completely a normal way uh, for people to behave, uh, whether or not it's politically correct or apropos or, 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 or uh, in any way uh, civilized, modern, um, uh, enlightened, uh, word that I hate the most. What is it? Um, um, oh, is that awful, awful term? Or I can't even think of it because it's such a terrible term. Um, elevated. It's certainly not elevated, uh, but that's just the way, you know, um, young boys are when they're trying to talk about all the sex that they should be having or will be having or want to have but can't. And ergo, since agedness is the uh, is the time where men go through their second and third third childhoods and try to recapture the uh, the sexuality and and prowess of youth, um, I dare say that that aging billionaires tend to want to talk either about their conquests or the fact that they still have the ability to shack a dack a ding dong. Uh, anyway. Um, if, if my friends, if my fancy friends on Facebook are not lying and BSing, or if they were so nerdy that they were never in a proper locker room and were only in fencing locker room or squash locker room or soccer locker room or cross country locker room and not in like football, wrestling, etc. Or maybe they were just defeat. Maybe they 
didn't have many hormones that were driving them to feel like cultural culture was being a boy and being a cisgender male. There's a lot of lot of lot of pressure to be you know barrel 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 barrel. Um, yeah, I'm classy. And so, like, that kind of way that Trump was talking, completely misogynistic, completely condescending, um, vaguely, vaguely, uh, comment dit-on, comment, um, uh, anti-woman. I mean, certainly objectifying and reducing and, and, um, vaguely, uh, um, Oh, what's the term? Alexa, what is the word for the hatred of women? According to another Amazon customer, the counterpart of misogyny is misandry, the hatred or dislike of men. The antonym of misogyny is phylogyny, the love or fondness of women. So I meant misogynist. It was a very misogynist uh, thing to say. Anyway, I'm recording this after because I was listening to my podcast and I never addressed this. Anyway, thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you.